All right. We're going to welcome you back to the Principal's Podcast. Um, I'm Mr. Murray, but it looks as though I'm Ray, Mac, and Carl. Joining us uh, is Mr. Hyam. Mr. Hyam, are you throwing back through a Thursday or throwback Thursday? Well, I got a little collared sweater on, jacket, trying to stay warm, you know. Nice. And and joining us via I Never Come to School is Matthew Somjack. Hi. Uh, not going to Hi. So you have fifth period off. We're just making a joke. You're at home. Uh, today's podcast, we're really excited. I don't think we take enough time to really talk about the success of track and cross country. Um, it is just as big and probably equivalent or might even have bigger outcomes as like football in Northeast Ohio up here. Our, our cross country teams, since I was a student here, um, after I graduated and when I came back, have been consistent, consistent, whether we're talking about, you know, the work that uh, Mark Schaefer, uh, Cole has done, um, or even previous coaches uh, that were here uh, as staples for, for many years, uh, for over 40 years plus. Well, actually, we're talking at least 45 years, 45 years, Chardon, has been dominant and consistent in cross country and track. So that is something to talk about. That's something to celebrate. And we don't do that enough. We have as many or more state champions in cross country individually and as a team as we do in football. And you need the recognition. So I want to start by saying to you and those that are not in this room, I'm really proud of you. Like, I'm really proud of you. I cannot run. Okay, running taxes me. Um, I am, uh, he's ran a marathon, but he no longer can. So he understands, not from a competition, but he, he did it to challenge himself. This is a big task. And so, again, for all of you that have put in the time that no one understands that you're here in the summer, the butt crack of dawn, running, conditioning nonstop, having Mark Schaeferisms or Julie Coleisms, and nonstop doing various sequences of conditioning to get you to the ultimate race. Like you put in a lot of time and we're very proud of you. So welcome you to the podcast. It's been another great season. Um, let's talk about this weekend. State meet. Um, what do you know about this uh, terrain um, there and wh where you're running? It's like straight flat. There's one hill. Straight flat, one hill. One hill. Okay. And what type of conditioning do you do in Northeast Ohio that you feel will prepare you for the longevity of running flat? Like you do a lot of hill work here. Yeah. Yeah. So the your, do you feel like your inter endurance will be good? because you, you've taxed yourself differently? Or is it a different type of taxing when you run on flat ground versus? Really, there's, there's no like change up at all. So if you fall asleep on flat ground and you just, you know, you're not gonna be able to like re-accelerate really. There's nothing to like change your pace, I guess. So if you start sucking on flat ground, you're gonna run really bad. But if you stay focused on flat ground, you're gonna mm -hmm. run really well. Okay. Right, and that one hill being there, you know, that's that's honestly probably good for us. I think. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, can, nice, nice little refresher right in the middle of the race. Refresher. Uh, you, know. you might throw on an accelerator and start passing yeah. people. Yeah. Because of your consistency, and they might slow down. Um, question number one is: How long have you competitively ran? All each of you. Start with Ray. Um. In seventh grade, so. so seventh grade, but yeah. before that, did you just naturally run because it was in your family, or no? I sucked, you sucked at running in elementary school. I ran a 12 minute, I don't even think I finished the mile actually. It was 12 minutes, 12 minute mile. You and I would be friends at that point. Um, when did you start? I started in like seventh grade, yeah, seventh grade, 
Uh, I remember I did a mile in like sixth grade. I think I ran like 8.30 or something like that. And I never did any running before that. I did like swimming, but like that's about it. And for all of you uh, who are joining and watching this, we do have a state champion in the in the house. He's a very humble man. Um, you love uh, kind of gassing it from the start, being in track. So have you had to adjust yourself in cross country? Uh, actually, I started in cross country. You started there? Yeah. Um, it was, I think, fourth grade. Matthew and I started running together. Um, St. Mary's, CYO. I, I started track, I think, in fifth grade. Um, yeah, I think I, was, I wasn't like in baseball. So I started track. And yeah, that's... And I don't want to uh, mislead Mr. Sopchak over there. So tell us a little bit about your uh, beginning, your your narrative of when you started. So I started track in fifth grade. Me and Carl ran together. We ran we ran together since fifth grade every year. And then I started cross country in sixth grade. And then I started focusing on track, I'd say, freshman year, sophomore year, freshman year, because I quit baseball in seventh grade after seventh grade. All right. So for all of our listeners out there, explain to the novice person what uh, this race entails, like how many miles, like what is what is the sequence so that anyone out there who shows up for the first time would understand this was what cross country is like. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, what do you say? 3.1 miles. Yeah, 3.14 <laughs> miles. Um, you know, you got probably what? How many kids? I think 200. Yeah, I was just saying 200, 200, 200 kids. kids. You're all lined up on a start line. It, it uh, like funnels into like a narrow path. Yeah, it's probably like four people wide. Yeah, yeah after yeah. like a quarter quarter of a mile around, you're just in this like funneled path. Pro pretty much the whole race. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty tight funnel. And then um, I guess you have like certain cheering hotspots. So there's like places where way more people will be. And then there's like dead spots on the course. So like running past people that are cheering kind of gets you to be fired up, stuff like that. You know, really, it's just running. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is nothing really. But you, guys, you guys talk about this course. Does that change your mindset of how you want to start or? kind of finish do, do you have to get out to a quicker start because you don't want to get caught behind some people like does this factor in you know i i know carl you said it's just running but you know many sports there's the there's the you know the science behind it, the thinking side behind it does that play a role guys absolutely but uh not as much as um regional i think the course that we just raced on last weekend is probably worse of a funnel yeah. than this weekend so i think we're already pretty used to that i do agree with like like when you get to the bigger meets like districts regionals and state you do want to go fat like out harder because there's a lot more faster people and like much more quality in the field so like you want to like think about how you want to go out because if if you get stuck in the back then it's just going to be like that your whole race so you want to just think about like how you want to go out at the start? Unless you get sandbagged. <laughs> are, are you guys worried about the conditions at all, or do you feel like looking ahead that that's not going to play a role because hey, we run in the snow, we run, you know, whatever it is. Um, do you expect a course that's dry, muddy? Do you expect a fast course, a slow course? Ray, what do you what are you expecting out there? Oh, it's going to be a fast course. Because I think it hasn't rained, so it's gonna be dry. I think the wind's like down. The wind, no wind. wind. There's like yeah, no it's wind. It's a, a pretty yeah. sixty degree day. It's gonna be yeah. ideal conditions. Yeah, maybe a little bit too warm for you because you kind of like probably like, sub like sixty. Like yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but I'm not saying like thirty than degrees. Than but than yeah, than yeah, than. yeah. I'm like a fifty degrees guy yeah. where that's like perfect. I, but sixty, yeah. sixty is not a problem. No, once it, gets that one, once it gets to like 75, then yeah, they start yeah. losing. Yeah. Yeah. It starts sweating. No. Yeah. So you have um, a great fan base. A lot of it is, you know, family and friends. Um, 
what is it about moms and dads, brothers and sisters showing up for, you know, literally how long is it is the whole process from start to finish? Obviously, you're there for your dynamic warm ups, your team stuff, but the race, we're talking like big from the first person to the last person, no more than like 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You know, it's not a long, it's not like yeah. going to Friday Night Football yeah. where you're there for two and a half hours. Yeah. You're there for two and a half hours, but the race is not as long. Mm -hmm. um, so how important it is, is it for you to, you know, have those, that little circle around you? Um, very important. Very important. I mean, like when you run by and you hear them cheering for you, it, it like, I just up. It almost feels like family. No yeah. Just like having everyone share for you. It's like, it, it really means a lot. Yeah, I, I can give a specific case. This weekend, um, you know, starting to feel it, we have like, I think probably three quarters of a mile to go and Sobchak's older brothers are screaming at me that, you know, the team needs me and stuff like that. It, it helps you. It reinvigorates you a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think running a 5K just in silence would be, impossible at least for me because you know, yeah. it's, it's so easy to mentally clock out and i guess um you know having those people around you that are there every weekend cheering for you it, it really helps you to you know stay focused matthew could you talk a little bit about um you know your dad plays an instrumental role uh not only with this practice but he's been uh, a videographer for you guys um which is awesome to see a like a team hype video and or a recap so i i appreciate that so What's the importance of family for you? Uh, well, like Carl said, uh, my brothers are there. So I, I don't know, whenever I hear them like cheering for me, it's like a wake up call, honestly, like, cause I clock out a lot. Like I'm not, I'm not the strongest mentally in 5k. So when I clock out, it's good to have them wake me up. But, um, but yeah, my dad's videos, I don't know. I appreciate all of them. I love them. Um, I watch every single one of them when he, when he makes them. So nice that he makes them for us i think the team appreciates it too just last weekend he figured out how to use boomerangs <laughs> that was, that was my brother and i were making fun of him for that that was bad, <laughs> bad. i mean in the week of reflection i'm going to include not only this podcast um but some um reflection from coach both coaches um along with for those that want to come, how to get link uh, tickets to, to the event, um, and also the live stream. So trying to really promote you guys because it's a lot easier to promote a, something like football, where like Spectrum's coming or GTV's covering, and like there's people there. I'm there with my video camera. Um, those are really important things for people to see because otherwise they just hear about it later from Mr. Snyder. Um, it's important that they re re realize that. You are amazing at what you do. So again, I appreciate you. I'm, I value all that you do, including all of your teammates and your coaches and your families. And um, I'm not gonna say good luck because you don't need it. Just stay the course, stay the course. Don't change, don't change your routines at all. I told you that yesterday, right? So um, Mr. Hyam, uh, what do you got for him? Well, I got some off-centered questions and then pretty some straightforward. And I'll, we'll just start here. You guys jump in. You don't have to answer them all. Uh, but would you rather run in your favorite outfit every day, but you can only wash it once a week, or you run in a clean clothes every day that you hate? Clean clothes every day that I hate? Yeah. Yeah. You're a clean guy, huh? Yeah, well, plus, like, all, I think all those stuff I wear for running is just, like, you know, like, random shirts that I have and, you know, a random pair of shorts. So, yep. kind of where I'm at right now. All right. Hey, would you guys rather have free running shoes for life or free registration into races for life? So, what's the, what's the, what's the top of the line shoe right now? Or does it really depend on the type of runner you are you wear a different type of shoe what do you guys wear i wear a sock and, a, and then i have a pair of new balances too yeah new balance or sock and a. i mean nike for like racing yeah, yeah. Shoes, nike, it's nike. 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 Nike racing stuff but you 
like training wise, like New Balance, Saucony, Poco. Yeah. I'll switch every time. No Brooks. Oh, Brooks is great too. Yeah, really, just kind of it's kind of a personal preference. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it honestly best for you. Racing is by far Nike right now. But yeah. Everything else is, you know, okay. Just what works for you. Hey, you know, I know you guys never think of this. Maybe, maybe shop check, but hey, would you rather eat a slice of pizza mid race or drink a milkshake? Oh, pizza, oh. pizza, <laughs> milkshake would. Knock me out. Yeah, and then, like milkshakes go straight through you too. So I just think milkshake. I well, could, I could not eat that. Like chewing, like yeah, chewing and running is a hard thing to do. I don't know if I could do that. It's milk. Oh. Yeah, yeah it's no, like, that, that that stays. Are, are you saying? Are you saying that it would have had no effect on you at all? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying what, what you prefer. I, I guess There's the no I effect on the pizza, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm going with pizza on this. Go. Going with pizza. So, would you guys? Um, you know, I know you guys run a lot without music when you train, but would you rather run without music or without a GPS watch? Without music. Without music. I gotta yeah. I gotta walk my miles right yeah. yeah, without music. I gotta back my miles. I can talk to myself. Look at these Murray, these are professionals. You and I would have the music, we'd have everything else. They're all about, you know, training, numbers, the analytics. They must have a math teacher or someone involved with coaching them, huh? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. You hey, it. would you would you guys rather would you rather run as much as you can and as often as you want on a treadmill or only once a week outside? Once a week outside. Yeah, once a week yeah. outside. Yeah, once once a week outside. Are you, are you telling me if we were only treadmill team, you wouldn't be running? It, it gets really boring after a while. Yeah, it's, it's just that inside yeah, just like sitting there. Yeah, just part of the the mileage is like right in front of your face, so you can't like look away. So you just like, walk <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, over and over again. And it's just yeah. like this. <laughs> so I, I got I got two more for you guys, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, marathon base. Would you rather run the New York City or the Boston Marathon? Mm, I'm gonna go to New York on this. In Boston. Boston's a cool city. You got two Bostons, one New York. Top check. What does he even I don't know? know. Boston? <laughs> Preferably, okay. I would not agree with that. The Boston Marathon is a good one. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this one, and, and I think we pretty much know the answer, Murray, and then I'll turn it over to you. Would you rather run with someone who's chatty or someone who's silent? Chatty. 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 If it's that quiet, it gets boring. Yeah. So do you guys find yourself a little talk, a little – on the race, you know, chatting with the person next to you. Can you smack talk a little bit? Can you, or is that not, is not kind of allowed? You know, kind of keep you focused. No, I, mean, I don't run. think I could think that much. Every once in a while, someone will get shoved and you'll hear some cuss words, but about, oh, okay. yeah. that's yeah. appropriate for this podcast. We might get uh, more viewers if we use some of that language, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've said sorry before. You said sorry. Like, sorry before. Yeah. Sometimes my teammates really? like smack my yeah, butt and say, "Let's go," and I just they kind of get it. It's like seriously. <laughs> I I would absolutely love that if cross country was like NASCAR. It would, yeah, that would be drafting cool. people, be passing people, bumping yeah. people. Everybody would love yeah. watching that. Too. Imagine oh, getting mic'd up in a cross race. Mic'd up. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, I know Murray kind of kind of joked about it, but is there a point of like drafting behind someone or kind of? you know, using your elbows. I mean, is that part of the race? Is that part of the technical, you know, piece that you guys kind of need to have this weekend to really maybe outperform some other teams? Drafting for sure. I, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I use people all that the time. Funnel, dude? I'm, 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 I'll like be like, I'll, I'll keep them the last one. I don't try to hurt people. I just like kind of get them out of my way. I've seen yeah. like, ever. <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying I'm going to use my elbows, but I might use my elbows. <laughs> so, so it it seems like you guys are in a good place, excited, uh, comfortable. You look comfortable. Um, what are we expecting this weekend? Um, or are we kind of not think about that and just think about running our best race and it is what it is? Or you guys are you guys kind of talked about it a little bit? I know we have an individual side and we have a team side, but where are you guys at with that? Like team wise. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the boys are going down as a team. Ray's kind of going down by herself a little bit. Have you guys? Are you guys just want to look at running your best race and and where, however, it falls out, it falls out. Or do you have you guys kind of talked a little bit about what your dreams are and hopes are this weekend? Even like, I, we're yeah, ranked you know, like if we all run our best, like we we're ranked like second. If we would get like second place as a team, so, so I mean. I guess I do. It's just all running our best. Yeah, yeah right. running our best. But uh, I'd say a team goal will be to win, for sure. A team goal is to win. I mean, every, everyone knows I want that picture on the wall. <laughs> she wants all Ohio. I want all Ohio. <laughs> so what's it take to be all Ohio? Is that top 16 or top 32? It's top 30. Top 30. I think for girls, at least. I don't know if that would be the same for you guys. I think it's 28. Yeah, I think yeah. it's 28. Okay, so looking at the top 30, where where are you kind of feeling? Is that is that reachable? Or is that or is that something that's gonna have to things are gonna have to fall right for you? I'll be completely honest. I have not I do not know what I mean. <laughs> like I have not looked. <laughs> I will check it eventually. Has Coach told you? No, know. she hasn't told me. Oh. Um I think it's I think it's doable. Like I think I'm strong enough where I can. Well, remember, regardless of that outcome, I'm going to have a picture of you in my office for yeah, that one true. race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think sometimes you need to have that, you know, that thought of what you want to achieve. But sometimes it's better not to know and just go out like you guys say, put your best performance in, and know that it's going to be enough. Yeah. And you know, I I'm sure. Murray would agree with us, uh, with me, not with all, you know, that we top her up this weekend and great things will happen. Yeah, I agree. I know um, Ms. Pavisek absolutely wanted to join this, but she had a meeting uh, and she, I saw her walk by Mr. Hyam's office when he was talking and I, I really think she would love to be here because she's a runner. She runs marathons. She just went to Indianapolis and she's training for another one. And after school around four o'clock, she'll go out there and he'll, he'll oh, yeah, 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 we, we see her all working. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like uh, we have a lot of administrators that are runners, Ms. Uh, Dr. Hanlon, uh, Ms. Pavisek, Ms. Mr. Prezioso. They all are, are also runners. So it's awesome to see that modeled by some of the adults. You won't see me doing that. Uh, but it's you'll, too late to you'll start, be, No, I didn't see that's the thing. Like, that's hey, I, Marie, I know you're strong. We went to the weight room. I saw you. Okay, I can work out. I'm not trying to you know, bring back a song. I work out, but I can I can, I can hold my own in things I enjoy. Uh, but so there's certain things you just know that you're not going to be good at, so you just enjoy to watch. Um, Mr. Hyam and I are all about uh, going as fast as we can for 90 feet. Like that's all you need: 90 feet in intervals of 90 feet. That's right. No, I I, I do miss running. Uh, but with my herniated disc in my neck, it's just not something I can do anymore. Uh, so I, I do appreciate everything you guys do. For those who are not runners, it is a mental game. Uh, it's more taxing on your on your mind than I think on your body. I think you guys would tell tell that to the viewers, the few that we do have, um, that really your mind will quit and wander a lot sooner than your body will quit and. And that's something I think you guys probably have trained and try to work through on those tough training days to try to stay mentally tough. So I wish you guys the best. And I know you guys will do great on Saturday. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. To, to close out our podcast um, is a moment of gratitude. We always close with gratitude. Um, so while you're thinking about anybody, it could be anybody, anyone, your family, friends, coaches that you want to say, give a shout out to. Um, I just want to remind everyone, and you can think, uh, check Friday for the Week in Reflection to watch this live, to see the article about them uh, internally written uh, so that you can support them. And obviously, we also have other teams competing this this week, too. But the focus of this podcast is cross country. Um, so who would you like to give a shout out to? Thomas week? Nelson. Thomas Nelson. Thomas Nelson. Can't be here right now, but great guy. Team captain. Same with Tim and Choxy, another team captain, great guy. You know, they've been doing a great job leading the team, doing what they're supposed to do. And, you know, awesome. Thanks. 
Uh, I'm going to have to go with uh, Mr. Schaefer, best coach out there, best person I've ever met, honestly. Yeah, I was going to say Dr. Mendezin. I mean, he's done more for me than most people. So That's great. I'm not sleep running today because of him. So I give all my glory to the man up above. That's all. That's all. How's it going? <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's very powerful, you know. Focus on uh, what matters first, and obviously everything falls underneath there. Um, so, on behalf of that, I will. I'm going to give uh, a shout out to all your parents um, because there's a lot of sacrifice uh, that goes into this sport, um, and and so I give my shout out this week to all the moms, dads, brothers and sisters, guardians, grandmas and grandpas, friends, boyfriends and girlfriends that come and support you um, because that that is your secondary circle uh, after what. Matthew just mentioned. So that's my shout out. Yeah. You got to well, shout out the rest of the team too. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Shout out the rest of the team. Couldn't have done it without them. I miss yeah. that. It's, it's so true. It's, it's a team uh, sport, but it's also so individual, just like, you know, wrestling and swimming, you know, you, you want to, you have some individual goals, but it's also important to be a great teammate. And I see you guys all the time out there and, Shout out to you guys for all the work. And quite honestly, the work you do in the summer is why you guys are here where you're at. It's not during the season. It's all that work in the summer when it's 90 degrees. Everyone's enjoying themselves, doing other things. And you guys are out there pounding the pavement, which um, leads you to this opportunity this weekend. So um, let's go Toppers. Yeah, amen. Um, so this afternoon, uh, you have uh, Drumline going to be uh, getting you off. Um, you leave tomorrow morning, right? Yep. You know, walk the, walk the course a little bit, get used to it, have is tomorrow night where like a team and or some sort of dinner at a location. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll yeah. carve it up. Um, so again, we we thank you for joining us today. We know that some of your teammates couldn't join us uh, and we'll be in your corner uh, as you race all the way through the finish line so let's try them thank you uh and as always top up go toppers go toppers